Hello, Classic Crew, and welcome to today's video where we're going to be talking about five opera pieces you didn't even know you know. Opera is something that I think a lot of people are not comfortable with because they think that it might be too difficult to listen to, it's boring, it's just not their style, maybe it's just for people who already like classical music, but the fact of the matter is there are a ton of pieces that you didn't even know that you've heard before. Opera is something that is used a lot in popular culture, but you might not even realize how much of it you've heard before and that you would be able to recognize like that. So I'm really excited to share with you guys five different pieces that you have heard before and you don't even know are opera, are operatic. And before we get into today's video, I would love if you would consider subscribing to my Substack newsletter. If you subscribe to my Substack newsletter, you will get access to exclusive content not available anywhere else. That includes two exclusive videos every month, as well as weekly articles and content pitch contests, as well as Q and A's for my subscribers. It's only $7 a month, which is $84 a year, but if you sign up for the entire year, it's $70, which saves you basically two months. So I really would recommend trying it out. Make sure to head to the description box to sign up or just head over to classically abby.substack.com. So now we're going to talk about some opera, so let's get into it. The first piece I want to talk about today is from the opera Carmen. You have heard this so many times. Here's a little clip. How many times have you heard that tune before? I mean, it's literally difficult to count because it's been in so many different movies and TV shows. Carmen was written by Georges Bizet. He only wrote two operas in his very short life. He died at the age of 35, but Carmen is truly a masterpiece. It is one of my favorite operas personally, and it tells the story of a gypsy who falls in love with Don Jose, a soldier, a private, in fact. And even though everyone has warned him, and she herself has warned him, that her love flies like a bird, kind of, she can fall in love with you easily and then just as easily fall right out of love, he falls head over heels for her, he follows her, he gives up everything, and she falls out of love with him, as is to be expected. And of course, it ends in tragedy when he kills her. So this this aria, which you are familiar with, is her introduction. This is when she comes out and tells everyone, you know, I'm Carmen, this is my credo, love is like a rebellious bird, and that is her kind of motto. So I love this opera. If you haven't watched Carmen before, you should definitely check it out. Actually, on my blog, I wrote a whole outline of what you should do to prepare to listen to it. I wrote 10 pieces that you should listen to, as well as the synopsis. There are a ton of other tunes in Carmen that you've heard before. I mean, one of the tunes from Carmen was directly pulled from Carmen and used in Aladdin. It's kind of funny. In the overture, I remember the first time I heard Carmen kind of actively, once I started listening to opera, I thought to myself, this sounds so familiar, and I realized it was because the composers for Aladdin had just kind of lifted it out of the overture of Carmen and used it in their score. So that is number one. Now let's get on to number two. Number two is Figaro, 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 Figaro. Yeah, you've heard that one before, because remember when we were kids and people didn't understand opera at all and we all wanted to tease it and make fun of it, that's what we would do? Yes, that is actually from a real opera. You may know it from Bugs at Bunny, you may know it from just kind of living life, because that's a very common way that people tease opera. But the funny part about this is that this aria is not actually from The Marriage of Figaro, which is what people assume, because Figaro is what well, they hear, and then they think of the opera, The Marriage of Figaro. In fact, this is from the opera, The Barber of Seville. So both of these operas are based on plays by Beaumarchais, and The Barber of Seville actually takes place 
before the marriage of Figaro. So in the Barber of Seville, a man named Count Almaviva has fallen in love with Rosina, who is the ward of an old man who does not really want to let her go outside and meet people. And Count Almaviva has hidden his identity so that she won't know that he is rich and want to marry him for his money. Well, to facilitate their relationship actually growing and becoming something that they can pursue, Figaro gets involved. Figaro is the Barber of Seville. And when he sings this aria, he introduces himself to the audience and he tells them about how he is the best barber in all the land and everyone wants him and people are calling him all over the place to have him come and do their hair. And so they yell, Figaro, for example. So that is aria number two. Now let's move on to number three. The third thing I want to talk about today is not actually an aria, and I should probably define what an aria is. An aria is a song from an opera. So this is not an aria, this is the overture, and you have probably heard this in many films. So this is from the opera William Tell, and William Tell has a very complicated story. I will not try and explain all of it, but just to get down to the basics, William Tell tells the story of William Tell in Switzerland under the Habsburg occupation. And of course, it does include the section where William Tell shoots an apple off of his son's head. So it is a wonderful opera, despite the fact that it is a little bit confusing and rather long, but this overture is wonderful. And it is indicative of Rossini's other overtures. So Rossini wrote many operas, and it became his signature to have a repetitive overture that slowly gets faster and faster and louder and louder. And so it's often used in movies and films to indicate something speeding up. And it's one of my favorite overtures. I love it. You've heard it before, and now you know what it's from. Number four is the flower duet from Lachme. So you've definitely heard this before, probably in a chocolate commercial. Let's be honest. That's usually when they use this duet and the next one I'm going to talk about. And the reason this is so beautiful is because you have a mezzo and a soprano singing just gloriously together. I have not had the good fortune of being able to sing it with someone. If somebody wanted to, I would totally do it. Uh, I just haven't had the opportunity in my singing career, but it is stunning and it is from the opera Lachme. So Lachme tells the story of the main character, Lachme, who lives during the British Raj and she and her handmaiden go out to the river right at the beginning of the opera and sing this flower duet. Does it have anything to do with the story? Not really, but it's just a beautiful way for us to kind of meet her and as the audience to be introduced to her. And it's a really lovely piece. It's pretty much what it sounds like and you've definitely heard it before. Last but not least, let's talk about the duet Belle Nuit from the opera The Tales of Hoffman. This is another duet that you have definitely heard, probably again in some sort of romantic commercial, and it is absolutely beautiful. It is also known as the Barcarolle. So a Barcarolle is a song traditionally sung by Venetian gondoliers. This has taken on that name and is kind of just known as that. The story of the Tales of Hoffman is very interesting because it's actually kind of like three operas in one. It's his stories. It's actually bookended with Hoffman, and then it has three of his stories, and he's kind of moving through them. And this is the third of the three stories, and it tells the story of a courtesan in Venice. Again, it's kind of complicated to explain, and I don't think I'm gonna go into the entire story here, especially because this duet is setting the scene. It's not really pertinent to the story, it's just setting the scene of, oh, this is a Venetian beautiful night. And it's really a gorgeous duet. I have sung this one and I love it and you have definitely heard it. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments if you actually did know all five of these, because I would think that you do, but if you don't, hey, now you learned something. And I would love if you would check out these songs in a playlist I'm going to link below on Spotify. So I will link all five of these pieces below and you can check them out yourselves. And I'd also love to know if there are some other pieces you think that people know, but don't know they know. So that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and make sure to ring that notification bell. It is super important to my channel for you to do that. 
Doesn't always work, but it still makes a huge difference. And if you would like to subscribe to my Substack newsletter, just head to the description box and click that link or head over to classicallyabby.substack.com. If you'd like to follow me on social media, it's at classicallyabby absolutely everywhere. Thank you so much for watching today's video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!